hi there to everybody. Um, sorry for the formal wear today. Uh, I've just come from uh, a bunch of TV interviews and speaking uh, about this subject, both live in Israel and in Poland and internationally as well. And really, I sort of just wanted to share with all of my friends and followers and people watching this from around the world um, my thoughts on the last few days. Um, what's happened is really difficult. We've entered a situation where the truth sort of doesn't matter anymore. You know, this is the whole era of Trump and, and everything else that we're speaking of, of fake news and pushing an agenda and an idea and a process. And it doesn't really matter whether we're telling the truth or not. But really, when we're coming down to such important facts and such important times, and dealing with such important things as Holocaust memory and memorial, the truth really does matter. And what we're seeing is a blur um, of every historical fact, um, starting with the fake news that came this morning. Um, now, a lot of people who, who will watch this and a lot of people who saw the fake news this morning automatically shouted, um, you know, that this is some kind of media manipulation or, or that this was pushed from some agenda or from some purpose. Now, I know the journalist very well uh, who wrote that story yesterday evening, the story about the Jewish cemeteries uh, that were uh, supposedly destroyed uh, in Poland over the last few days as a result of the current situation, something that turned out not to be true. I mean, I was shocked when I saw this article because I saw those images. And the images, as I've written about previously, were exactly the same images that I'd taken myself four years ago. I would visited that site numerous times. I visited that site with a group of students from Boston uh, where we cleaned up the cemetery a little bit, where we took tombstones back there from a, a location that was disturbed. And it, it was quite shocking for me. And when I reached out to the journalist and I understood the, the process in which he found out um, this information, um, there on one hand was obviously it was not a, a, a specific reason for him uh, to push this story. There wasn't a hidden agenda. However, that information did come from somewhere. And, and there is a very strong will uh, on behalf of certain people uh, to push a false narrative and a false agenda. And, and all of us uh, have to be aware of this and fight against this. Poland and Israel uh, are two countries that share a huge amount in common. Um, and, and this commonality and this shared history is something that we should be focusing on. And, and also, really what's happening now, we don't have, as Israelis, a, a huge amount of allies in Europe. You know, it's enough to look at countries like Germany, who, who pushes huge amount of money against Israel, who pushes an incredibly strong agenda when it comes to BDS, the boycott system of Israel, who's funding anti-Semitic and anti-Israeli groups. This is Germany of today. Poland isn't like that. Poland stands with Israel. Poland stands besides Israel. Poland is an ally of ours in the United Nations, in the EU. And we really have to bear that in mind. And we really have to think about that when we're dealing with Poles. And this obviously leads on to the incredibly ridiculous and racist comment of uh, Minister Israel Katz. The comment that Poles suckle uh, uh, anti-Semitism from their mothers. This was beyond belief. This was something that was very difficult for us to see and something that I was shocked that could even be said in today's day and age. To generalize against any nation is absurd, uh, racist, and just ridiculous. Um, you know, besides the absolute damage that this has done here in Poland, uh, which is extreme, many, many of my friends, um, good Poles who do a huge amount in terms of promoting Polish and Jewish relations around the world was so deeply offended with that comment and with that statement. And it really is going to take a huge amount of effort to try and explain to people that not all of us think like that. And really what I'm telling the Polish people who are watching this video is that honestly, on behalf of um, Israelis and as Jews, uh, I apologize. Uh, I apologize for the words of the minister because this is incorrect. Uh, the majority of young Israelis do not think like this. And we do have to figure out a way 
to move on. I see that there are people who are calling for the minister to be fired. Um, it, it's not going to happen. We also have to be realistic. There are elections in Israel, the same way that there are elections in Poland. And this is also all part of a political system and a political game. And we have to be conscious of that as well. But the truth is, is what we have to do is figure out how to move forward from this. There are people of goodwill on both sides who have an absolute interest in these relationships being stronger and moving forward. And this is really where we need to be focusing on and this is what we need to be doing. Uh, in light of that, uh, as many of you would have seen uh, this evening in uh, Klub Kavalnia uh, Babel, which is the Jewish Cultural, Associ Cultural Association of Poland's headquarters, Terskajed, we're going to be hosting uh, just a nice evening. Uh, the first drinks are on me, so everybody's welcome to come. Any of my friends watching from Warsaw, come, join us, have a drink, have a chat. We've got a bunch of Israelis coming, a bunch of Polish Jews coming, uh, a bunch of Poles as well. And it's just a nice opportunity for us to sit together, to talk, uh, and to really put our ideas and heads together about how we move forward from this process. Because again, this isn't something that any of us want to see or need to see happen. Uh, history is obviously crucial and there is no denying the historical facts and no one's attempting to deny those historical facts. The bill which has already been laid to rest and signed and mutual agreements between governments worked on that fact, decided on that fact and now is our time to move forward and to see how we can renormalize these relations between Poles and Jews because that is absolutely what needs to happen now. Now is our time to come back together, is to join together and to figure out how we move forward as two strong nations, as two patriotic nations, two nations that have this mutual history uh, connecting us from a historical perspective but also a mutual interest today. Poland is a thriving democracy Israel is a thriving democracy with, you know, a lot of mess in between. In fact, there's one thing that may surprise a lot of people watching this video is that there are a lot of words in current modern day Hebrew that derive from Polish. And one of those words, I think, best symbolizes uh, these entire relations. And that word is balagan. In Polish, bałagan. In Hebrew, balagan. And in English, I'm not sure, mess. I don't know how you call it. But the truth is, is that with this Balagan, with this Bawagan, there is definitely a way to move forward. And there's definitely mutual interest. So for friends watching, based in Warsaw, please join us tonight. Uh, it's on Prusina number five, the Babel coffee shop. Uh, there is beer there, wine, and the first round's on me. Uh, so from here in Warsaw, uh, I wish all of you a good evening. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be updating with a lot of better news uh, and nicer and better information for the future. Uh, all the best. Dovidzenia. Shalom.